Hey everybody, this is my 2010 Yamaha WR250R and um, what I'm going to be doing today is changing the rear brake pads. I'll uh, show you some pictures. I had installed a set of brake pads, I guess about a year ago in the rear and um, the last two rides the, the brakes have been feeling really mushy and at the same time I replaced the pads, I replaced this little cover here on the rear master cylinder and put new fluid in and bled it and it was fine initially. Um, so I was wondering what was up. I noticed on the last trail video I made when I finally took the effort to, to look down and see it. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. But one pad, and I'll, I'll show the pads after I take them out, is worn down to almost nothing. And the other pad still has a lot of meat on it. And you can see, if I can reach brake pedal here, you can see how far the piston is over. So what I'm going to end up doing is pulling the caliper off and uh, cleaning that piston all real nice and um, putting everything back together. And I'm also gonna put some grease, uh, some waterproof Bell Ray grease that I use for the wheel bearings on this pin uh, because those pads should really wear evenly. The caliper is a floating caliper. It should move back and forth as the, uh, as the brake engages. I'm hoping that piston's not out too far and I can just clean it up and push it back in. Um, but uh, we're gonna change out to a set of pads um, that I, I'd got clearance on the interwebs that had pretty good reviews for nine bucks for a set wasn't too bad so thing you're gonna see me do is take off these little eight millimeter bolts to take off this plastic protector cover um, and then what I'll do is move on to I'll probably take this screw off here to have a little more flexibility in the line and then take off the caliper as well, you don't need to take the caliper off to change the pads. You just take out this pin. Um, but like I said, I want to clean that piston up real well, re-lubricate what's called the slide pin, and um, you know get everything moving real well. So let's let's get into it. bit to get off nothing major I tend to put medium blue Loctite on everything make sure you keep the shorter bolt for the front and the longer bolt for the rear you can see that this is a much longer bolt than this one is set them aside um, then what we have is this pin which I'll take out with a flathead which I didn't bring so the first thing we're gonna do is take this pin out of here, this safety cover, whatever you want to call it, that protects the pin that the pads slide on. Sometimes you might have to spray a little uh, penetrating oil to get that out. Set that to the side. It's a small piece, pretty, pretty easy to lose. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get this pin out of here, which is the pin that holds the pads in place. We'll take that out. It shouldn't be in there too tight. But this one hasn't come out for a while, so. I should be able to walk it right out. Set it to the side. This is the pin. I'm going to put some lube on as well, some of the waterproof grease that holds the pads in place. And I should just be able to grab them, pull them out. Uh, I may need to grab I have my pliers. You just grab the whole thing and wiggle it out. Oh, the safety shield disintegrated. Apparently the pad disintegrated. So it's got plenty of meat on it, but it basically fell apart. So now I should be able to move the caliper around and slide this pad out. You can see there's much less meat on that pad. I'll, I'll do a, a better picture with the camera get those out. So now we have those out and then there's a clip that's in there that you have to make sure you take out. This clip will go back in with the new pads. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do, because I want to push that caliper back into the bore and clean it up a little bit, I am going to change the socket end I had here and take this bolt. Oh, I also said I was going to take this line off for more mobility, which I'll do now. Sometimes these are a little stuck. They take a little working to get them out, which I did off camera, so that this would come out easier on camera. And I'll just 
turning a washer because I'm not turning the head of the screw. And that comes out. Put that in my little parts tray here so that it comes off easy. And get to this bolt. I'm a socket guy. I know a lot of guys use like using T-handle Allens. I have some of those, but I prefer sockets. That pops out. This is the bolt as well you're going to grease because that's what the caliper slides on. And then I just have this other little bolt to get out of here with the rubber stopper. I think, I think it could just be pulled out. i got to investigate that. I'll come back after I investigate. So we're back, and unfortunately, we're back with a learning moment that I just learned because I got the rubber booty thing off this. This is just a pin that uh, I'm not exactly sure how it comes out of the um, caliper mount because there's no screw head on it of any kind. Um, I guess I could put vice grips on it. Uh, but what I thought is, well, if I take off all of the whole system as a whole, take off all these little mounting bolts so I could slide this and try to rotate this to get it off that I would be able to do it to save myself the trouble of putting it on the stand and dropping the wheel because you're not going to get past the caliper or uh, the brake rotor, not the caliper, the brake rotor. You're not going to get past that. Um, but it ends up being that you still can't get off this pin. So I'm going to try one other thing um, and then if I have to, I'll put it on the stand and take the wheel off, which I was trying to avoid. But all this effort is not to replace the brake pads, but it's to clean the outside of the piston, smooth it up, clean it up, and get it back in the bore, um, and then grease everything so that the caliper moves back and forth uh, like it should, um, so that we get even pad wear and not uneven pad wear. So, once again, back in a I have it on the stand now, and uh, I have my 10 and 12 for the axle adjuster bolts. I'm a little OCD with stuff, so I like actually marking things with a marker so I know where they are, where they go back to. I'll probably, uh, when I drop the wheel, of course every project turns into more work than you start out to do. This is supposed to be a simple changing of the pads and pushing the piston back in. Um, but what I'll do is the inside of the wheel is all dirty and gacky. Uh, the hub, uh, much easier to clean when it's off the, the bike and I have the brake clean out anyway. So I'll probably clean that up. Um, you watch me take a couple seconds to, to take this wheel off. And then, uh, then we'll go back to the intended project of working on the caliper. Uh, hopefully this is up my seat. Um, so let me knock that wheel off real quick. Get these. Spacer goes on which side? All right. Oh my. Now, now we can take this off, and I can rotate the camera, and you can see how that piston needs to be moved into, back into that bore. I'm going to clean it up with some more brake clean and some sandpaper first. Sorry if I was too close. And the next shot you'll see is the uh, everything cleaned up and probably putting it back together. And putting the uh, brake pads in. Hey there. Um, where we are now is I put most of the brake assembly back together and um, leaving this a little bit loose so that I, if I got to take this cap off, I can, which I may. Um, I don't know how well you can see it on camera there. I cleaned up the piston with uh, both some paper towel and a brake and some brake cleaner, as well as some sandpaper. 
some um, nice gentle 1500 grit sandpaper so it wouldn't actually hurt the piston itself it would just take off any of the corrosion rust and what that allows me to do is I'm gonna need to do it to put the new pads on which have a lot of meat on them be able to push it push the piston back in the bore now, if I get too much resistance it means there's too much fluid in there and I'm actually gonna have to take some of it out when I push this back in but for right now well we may have room for our pads to go in there if not I'll squeeze it a little more open the top on that and uh, see what happens um, but uh, so this is this is the hanger for the caliper itself uh, I'm gonna lube the bolt that goes through there as well as lube this pin here this is the one uh, that I actually because of this I had to drop the wheel if they just had another bolt in there that was like this I wouldn't have to do that but um, I cleaned the inside of this out as well on the caliper um, this slide I had off Oop, there goes the clip don't lose this clip. You need to have that in there to hold the edge of the pads. Sometimes the pad companies supply grease for that. Um, but I'm gonna lubricate that pin as well as the bolt um, with a little bit of, this is what I use for my wheel bearings. Um, typically waterproof grease since on a dirt bike, I just hold it better than that. Um, some Bell Ray waterproof grease works well. Tub lasts forever. Um, it's cheap, uh, I don't know, $9.95, $14.95, something like that. Um, I've used it for years in all my dirt bikes. I've had this tub for years. Um, of course, when it gets to the point that I'm ready to start touching the pads, I'm gonna take these gloves off, make sure my hands are clean and not have any grease on them. But for right now, and just the illustration purposes, I'm just gonna put some grease on there. And again, you know, just use common sense. You do not wanna get grease on any of the surface, like the brake disc or um, the pads themselves, because then obviously the brakes aren't gonna to work too bad. You'll contaminate the pads. And need to change them out so I'm gonna slide this back in the spot um, for right now I'm gonna take some more of this grease now this is the other bolt that holds the caliper I'm gonna re-grease this um, and put it back all back together before I put the pads on um, as a matter of fact right now that's all the greasing I'm doing so I'm going to take the gloves off now and Put everything back together with bare hands so this will now slide over this pin here which you slide it back and forth a little and this is the problem when one pad wears unevenly from the other it's because this isn't sliding as well as it should um, so what I'll do is I'll take that bolt that we lubed up as well put that through which I get I could hopefully be able to get that in this screws into the caliper itself so screw that in we'll torque it down in a minute and what that allows so I can't hopefully you can see that what that allows the caliper to do is to slide back and forth is which is which is what you want um, the grease should allow that and what that'll do um, is hopefully if it works the way it's designed to work is it'll every time you apply the brakes it will center the caliper which should in theory um, put the same amount of pressure on both sides of the pads and not have one side wear more than the other um, it might have been that I didn't keep up the maintenance on these pins with the grease that made the last set of pads wear one, more on one side than the other and the piston comes so far out uh, not really sure I'm usually pretty diligent with my maintenance um, I know I've done this before, so, but uh, that's where we're at, and what I'll do is I'll put the pads back, and the new pads in now, um, I need some brake clean, clean my hands, paper towel, I'll grab the pads, should be able to put them in, um, I'm going to put a little move on the bolt that holds those two, um, once I get it in place, um, I, I'll be inserting a picture of the company that makes the pads, they're called Neutron, like I said, $9 clearance on the interwebs, and um, they got a lot of meat on them. Um, they also, oh, there's this clip to put in there too. Um, they also um, had great reviews. They had almost 500 reviews, 481 reviews on the company I bought them from, and 90% uh, of those reviews were great. So for $9, you can't go wrong. Figured I'd pick up a couple sets. Um, this is probably third or fourth set of brake pads I've changed on this bike. It's a 2010. I've had it obviously for nine years then. So um, what we'll do is this actually goes in the caliper as well. 
sticks right. Uh, probably take that caliber off to do that. Of course, now that I mounted that bolt, it's easier to, to install this with the pad out. These are basically just to protect the caliber body. I'm gonna have to go. It took me a quick minute to figure it out, but that clip mounts on there like that so that it's out of the way. It holds the top side of the pad and stays out of the way so the pin can go through. So we should be able to put the pads in, to which I just cleaned off with brake clean, to ensure that they're clean, fully clean. Get that mounted. Get this bolt in where it's supposed to go. Again, all these pins were lubed to where they're supposed to be and mounted so that the caliper can slide back and forth easily. Now, I should be able to, and it might be easier with the wheel back in there, so I may have to come back to it. Let's put these pads in. Put this one on this side. Hold them in place with my finger. And I should be able to take this, and I'm dropping them. This pin, just get a little bit of grease on this, because we want the calipers to slide on this as well. Or the pads, I should say, to slide on this. Clean that off. Get the Allen key, that's gonna turn this. Which is that one. Grab the pad, again, sliding it in that little groove in the bottom of the caliper, get these guys up in place, be able to put this pin through with a little bit of pressure. Hopefully the camera's getting that. Put this back in. And snug that down. So now you see the pads are both back in there. My piston's out still a little bit. I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna clean that first, but then I'm gonna spread them open carefully with uh, a screwdriver to push the piston back in the bore. I can actually do that now. And very gently slide them open enough. Push, push with the screwdriver, which is not contaminated, enough to get the disc in there which that might just be enough room. I have to open it up and take some, you can see the piston going back in the board as I do that. You gotta do it evenly and slow. And that apparently developed a fluid leak. So I'm gonna pause here for a second. I'm gonna take that top off and uh, hopefully I didn't break a seal at all and ensure that it still works. Back in a minute. Welcome back. We got the caliper clip situation sorted out. And I'll, I'll get a close-up on that in a second. Also, something I had done uh, after the previous section of uh, putting putting the pads in and, and pushing the piston back in its bore, um, I loosened the top of the reservoir, let any fluid come out that was going to come out. Um, also, the bolts that hold on, they're, they're Phillips head screws, but they're not actually Phillips head. They're what's called JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard. It's like a Phillips head that doesn't come to a point. Uh, they're a pain in the butt to deal with. They strip out a lot of times. I always have a lot of metric bolts, M5s and M6s. Uh, so all of those bolts I took out, I've replaced with an M5 uh, metric bolt with an Allen head. And in case it strips out, number one, it's easier to get a, a uh, easy out into because of its, its uh, Allen head shape. And it's also very easy to take out with um, some vice grips if need be. Uh, so the last one here I left to, to show you, since it's stainless steel going in aluminum before everybody gets all worried about the, uh, whatever they call that, the, the electro corrosion or whatever happens between dissimilar metals, I put a little bit of grease on them. It should also make it easier to get out the next time I have to loosen these. Um, they don't go in with a lot of torque. Um, this one I probably should have pre-put in before I started, but uh, there we go. Get that bad boy started. and. With the grease, they'll go in relatively easily. 
a little uh, help from an Allen. It does not take a lot of force to get these in, but it should make changing things over next time easier. Um, the bolts that come on these bikes from Japan, you know, they're pretty corrosion resistant, corrosion resistant, but I like using uh, stainless steel bolts for a lot of applications. Um, anytime, I, anytime I change things out on a bike, um, if I have the bolts on hand, which sometimes I pre-order, depending on if I know what I'm doing, sometimes I don't. Um, so change those out. They uh, look, look a little bit better. They're stainless, they'll stay looking nice. They won't tarnish. Uh, they're all the brake line holder bolts. Um, the brake pads are in, as you can see. The piston is much further back in the bore now. Um, I've already checked it with the, um, the brake pedal and uh, had it stop the wheel. I had to put the wheel back on to get everything to, to line up where I needed it before I tightened the other bolts. Um, but as you can see now, the caliper has, well, it's centered itself now because I, I've used the brakes. I cleaned everything up, cleaned up the other side of the chain guard, a little bit inside the wheel. Now all that's left is just to uh, tighten everything down to spec and um, put to uh, move the chain and take it for a ride. So I'll put that other little guard back on. You really don't need to see that. It's just a plastic guard that goes around here. Some people replace them with stainless, or not stainless, with aluminum ones, but the plastic one has worked fine for me. So hope that helps anybody that's changing uh, rear pads on a uh, uh, Yamaha WR250R. It's, uh, it's been the bike, same bike since 2008. They've made minor changes, uh, the fuel pump issue, which everybody knows about. Um, but overall, the, the bike's been the same for the last 10 or 11 years. Um, and uh, I'll give you future updates to let you know how uh, these pads work out from this company, Neutron. Neutron brake pads. They were the ones that were uh, on sale and uh, can't go wrong for $9. And I bought two pairs because that was cheaper than the next next set of pads anyway so if i go through them twice as fast so be it thanks for watching hope you liked the video uh give a thumbs up any comments are welcome uh below i, I like hearing feedback from from people that watch the videos i don't get too much feedback but i'd like to hear some feedback and uh you know subscribe if you like most of my videos are riding videos both uh, motorcycles and mountain bikes but i do occasionally put uh maintenance videos and things like that up thanks take care bye